Let me say at the outset, this video might be quite triggering because I'm going to talk about a difficult subject. I'm going to talk about weight loss. I'm going to talk about body image. I'm going to talk about dieting. And the other thing I want to mention is that I am not a medical professional. I'm not a scientist. I am just a person who has been through quite a difficult time over the last 50 years with my weight, with my body image, with the way I see myself and the way I think others see me. And so if you feel that you might be triggered by this, that you might become emotional, then please don't watch. But for those of you who might feel like I do, and I'm 68, that you've been through a hell of a journey with your body image, with your weight, you've been through the menopause, you have either put on weight after menopause, or you just can't shift the weight. All of you who've been through that, this video might be helpful to you because I'm going to share my experience or what it's like to have been on a diet for 50 years or more. So if that sounds like something that you might be interested in hearing about, then please keep watching and let me know at the end how you feel once you've heard my story. So as I say, I'm 68. I just turned 68 in September, actually. And to be honest, I'm still not that happy with my body, even at 68. My waist is quite big in proportion to my hips. I am short-waisted as well, so that means the length of my body is really concentrated in my legs. I have quite nice long legs, I think, but my body is short. And because I tend to put weight on around my middle, my waist is larger in proportion to my hips. So at the moment, I think my waist is 30 inches and my hips are 38. So I think you should have a 10 inch difference between your waist and your hip measurements, and I don't have that. And if I lose any weight now, I'll just lose it off my hips as well. In fact, it tends to go off my hips more easily than it does my waist. I wanted to tell you my story about my weight and my body image because it has taken me to get to 68 to really, or maybe maybe my early 60s perhaps, to accept myself for what I am, which is quite ridiculous really. And if I were to go back and be able to tell my 14 year old self when I first embarked on losing weight at 14. I mean, how ridiculous is that? I'd say, do you know what? There are so many more important things in the world than worrying about whether you weigh a few more pounds or you have a few more pounds around your middle than your best friend. So let's go back to the beginning. I was born to two very good looking parents who actually looked quite similar. They could have been brother and sister, similar colouring, although my dad was fairer skinned, but also had dark hair like my mother did and both were very glamorous they were in the entertainment industry so my mother was an actress and my father was a theatrical producer anyway I was born in 1954 and my parents split up when I was seven and there had been quite a lot of rows going on and they'd obviously been quite unhappy my mother was on her third marriage and my father was devastated but anyway it was not a happy time and my father left or at least my mother made him leave I think and not that long after maybe a year or two this really unpleasant man moved in to live with me and my mother and I didn't really have much to do with him to be honest I, he didn't want to have anything to do with me I don't think and I think what happened was that I built up this massive resentment towards him and probably a bit towards my mother I suppose but it was mostly directed at him because as I say he was an unpleasant man he turned out to be incredibly unpleasant and I used to hear all these rows and arguments they would have and it did make me very unhappy anyway I'm rambling on a bit but I suppose what I'm trying to say is I was not a happy teenager anyway so as I moved into my teens from sort of the age of 13, 14, I would say I started to overeat quite considerably. In fact, maybe even earlier than that, because I've got these memories of going to the sweet shop before school and buying chocolates with my best friend and then stuffing my face during the day. And eventually it started to show on my body. So I did develop quite quickly. I, I ended up having a bust and hips and all of that at sort of 13 or so, 12 even. In fact, I started my period when I was 12. In fact, I remember the day because it was the beginning of the Six Day War. And um, 
I started to put weight on and I suppose I noticed it because I would compare myself to my girlfriends who were all slim. I didn't know anybody who was as big as I was. I mean, not that I was big, I just had a bigger waist. And again, as I say, a feature of having a short waist probably. So I just felt, I just felt uncomfortable. And of course, you're coming into 13, 14, you're a teenager, um, you're wearing, you're looking around at fashion and wanting to wear it and, and feeling really not that comfortable in the fashions of the day. I mean, I seem to remember hot pants were a thing, I think when I was 14. And because I had a short waist and a big tum, shorts just didn't really look right on me, especially very short shorts. So I was not a very happy teenager. And I remember joining Weight Watchers, which was ridiculous at 14. I don't know, they shouldn't have let me in really, particularly as I didn't weigh that much more than I should have done, I don't think. Anyway, moving forward to when I was 16, 17, I became an absolutely compulsive eater. I wouldn't just eat a main meal. I would eat huge amounts of snacks afterwards. So two of my favourite things to do were either to get a pack of Jacob's cream crackers and a, a dish of butter and a jar of blackcurrant jam. And I would eat my way through this entire pack of Jacob's cream crackers. Or the other favourite was to get what they called a take and bake loaf. It was one of those partially baked loaves of white bread. And I would bake that and then I would cover it with lashings of butter and honey. Now at this point, this horrible man had moved out. So it was me and my mum and she was working and I was left to my own devices for quite a lot of my teenagehood actually. And so she wouldn't be monitoring what I was eating at all. And I would just cook myself some dinner and then eat this massive snack afterwards as well. And I did this on a daily basis, so no wonder I got fat. Now, when I say fat, I wasn't, I was probably a maximum of two stone overweight, but two stone, which is 14, no, 28 pounds, is when you're small framed, and I am really small framed, I've got six inch wrists, very small wrists, small ankles. I take after my dad in that respect. He was a small framed man and that side of the family. and. I just looked big. I didn't look hugely fat, but I looked big and I was incredibly self-conscious about it. And really, I, in fact, I ended up self-harming and I went to see a psychiatrist and was treated by him for quite some time. And it did help up to a point. It helped up to a point because I think I then understood that I that my weight gain was a symptom of what I was feeling inside rather than a problem by itself. But I never really got to grips with it. I mean, another thing I used to do was make cake mix. I didn't used to make the cake. I'd just make a cake mix. Or actually, one of my favourite things to do, not just make the cake mix, but to make the um, to make the icing. And I would eat the raw icing, or at least I wouldn't bother making it. I'd just make the paste and then eat that. Because I had such a sweet tooth. And I, I suppose I did examine a little bit with the psychiatrist why I felt that way. I mean, gosh, it's so long ago now, so I suppose we must have talked about my relationship with my parents and my resentment towards my parents, especially my mum, for bringing this horrible man to live with us and the way he behaved towards her. He was mentally and physically abusive towards her. Let's not beat around the bush. So I understood that my eating was the cause of that, but I couldn't stop it. And by then I was also smoking, so I wasn't exactly Mrs. Healthy. And it wasn't really until I met my first husband that I lost the weight because I went on a diet. I mean, I fell in love with him when I was still quite big, actually, um, and he fell in love with me. So he didn't seem to mind <laughs> that I was a bit heavier than I should have been, maybe a stone and a half by that time. I was also singing in bands then and that's how I met him. Anyway, I decided to go on a diet for our wedding, which of course a lot of women do, classic example, and I lost the weight and I never really put it back on for quite some time. I always had a bit of a tum and I know when I used to go for singing auditions, in fact there was one, I ended up being in this band who were going to be the new, I don't know, girl and boy group or something. Um, and they wanted us to wear these very skimpy costumes. And I just remember looking at them and thinking, oh, God, that's just not me. I just can't do it. Anyway, luckily, the band never went anywhere, so I didn't have to worry about it. So, but I managed to keep the weight off. That's the main thing. I managed to keep the weight off and I didn't put weight on until 
probably my second child. So I had my first child my daughter and I lost the weight straight away I put a lot of weight on with my son and I couldn't blame him unfortunately I was hoping that when he came out I would be so much lighter but sadly that wasn't the case anyway I did lose it but it took me quite some time and then my weight did sort of fluctuate a bit so around 1997 I was diagnosed with an underactive thyroid gland which could have accounted for some of the weight I was putting on but actually again as soon as I was put on the thyroid pills I felt better but I didn't lose any weight sadly so it was really that I was still overeating and I was still smoking until 96 as well which wasn't good but eventually I managed to keep the weight off more or less the only time it went up and down was when I split up with my second husband and I put quite a bit of weight on and then I lost a load of weight because I was not in a good space and I ended up going to under, well, it must have been about 110 pounds, I think, which was too low for me, really, maybe even 108 pounds, which, of course, I thought I looked amazing. I thought it was brilliant, but I probably was a bit too low for me because really, ideally, I probably should be about 112. So that is really where I'm at in terms of my weight. But... My body image has always been an issue for me. So like I say, when I was a teenager, I was very conscious of being heavier than my girlfriends. In fact, I didn't really have very many friends of any kind or boyfriends um, in my teenage years. I seemed to live quite an isolated life. I think I felt quite sorry for myself. I was very introverted. I used to struggle to socialize. I didn't like going to parties. And actually, before I did this video, I was looking for photos of me um, when I was bigger and I couldn't really find that many because I think I tried not to be in photos. I didn't really want to be in photos because I didn't think I looked good. And also, apart from my weight, I also had issues about the way my face was. So I had terrible teeth. I finally got them sort of sorted out when I was 21. Um, I also didn't like my nose, but I did have a nose operation. My grandmother paid for me to have a nose job really we used to call them um, when I was 22 and I also got contact lenses although I really struggled with them because I was so short-sighted and so I used to have these really heavy glasses of course they weighed a lot because they didn't have the sort of plastic they have now so I, I'd always have to be lifting them up because they were so heavy so I had you know I had teeth issues I had nose issues I had eyes issues oh I had skin issues as well I didn't have acne but I used to have quite bad you know those big zits that you used to get now and again which of course you'd always squeeze and then <laughs> go all bloody oh god so yes I was not a pretty sight really or at least I felt I wasn't a pretty sight and because I felt I wasn't a pretty sight, I retreated into my shell and became this introverted, unsociable person. I mean, I can't remember whether I joined Weight Watchers again. I know I joined Slimming World years later with a girlfriend. I must have tried every diet from the F plan to the Atkins, everything you can possibly think of and more. So I've arrived at the ripe old age of 68, having kind of made peace with my body. I mean, my body has given birth to two children. I've been able to do things that I didn't believe I was capable of, like an abseil, like walking across a plank in the African bush, like walking a marathon circuit for breast cancer. So I have been able to do some amazing things with this body. And I just wish that I'd been able to tell my 16 year old self that, that really you can do anything you put your mind to, regardless of whether you're a few pounds heavier than you should be for your health. And I do think that's something that the body image positivity campaign doesn't really address. And that is health, because it's so important not to be too heavy for your body, because your organs need to be looked after. And if you've got rolls and rolls of heavy fat weighing down on them, that is not going to help your organs stay healthy. Ultimately, I suppose we have to think about food and our health in a sensible and measured way. I mean, I love eating, I love food. There's nothing I love more than going out for dinner with friends or going around to someone's house or even cooking. I'm not a great cook. I mean, I don't, I kind of enjoy it sometimes. I don't love it at the moment, a bit fed up with it, to be honest. But I have to be in the mood for it. But I love to eat and I love to drink alcohol, not too much. I only have a glass a day usually. But 
I love all of that and I don't want to I don't want to think too much about what I eat but actually I do I'm very very careful with it now I I make sure that I don't overeat because I'm only a small person and that's the other thing I haven't touched on but that's for another video about going through the menopause because a lot of women perhaps watching this will have gone through the menopause and then will attribute weight gain to the menopause and I'm sure that's right it didn't happen for me I just put weight on and lose weight because I eat too much or I don't eat as much but I do know that does happen to other women so I'm not here to say that you shouldn't be aware of it because of course you should so why am I talking about my weight and my body image at this time in my life well, I guess I hoped that it would help women like me who still struggle with their body image in their advanced age. I mean, 68 is getting there, isn't it? But we are all the same in our heads. We're still feeling 25 or 30 in our heads. We're not necessarily feeling 68. I certainly don't. And every time I say it, I still can't quite believe it. And I want to go on for as long as I possibly can. And I suppose that's the other thing about being 68 is that my mother died at 69 and she was overweight. She had lived an unhealthy life. She had smoked all her life. She had, well, all her life. She had smoked since she was a teenager. She drank to excess. She was not a healthy woman. And it was only in the last few years after she suffered a stroke that she stopped drinking and smoking. But unfortunately, the damage was done. It was too late. And on the day she was due to do a radio show, she collapsed and died. And I don't want that to happen to me. And I'm sure it won't happen to me because I've taken control of my health and I'm doing all the right things. But nevertheless, I don't want that to happen to me. And I want to keep healthy and well. And I hope that if you've stayed watching this video as long as I've been rambling on, that something I've said will trigger something for you in a good way and will make you realise that it is really important to be positive about the way we look because we've only got one body and we also need to look after it. So I guess body positivity can also mean be positive about the way you look after it and be proactive and take control of your health so that you can live a long and healthy life. So there, I've rambled on quite enough, I think. And I really hope that this video has been helpful to you in some way. And I would love it if you have enjoyed this video that you would subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know each time I upload a video. And thank you so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me. I cannot tell you how much joy I get from seeing comments and from seeing views on this channel. It really does mean a lot. And there are some of you particularly who are just so lovely and warm in your comments and generous. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so much. Lots and lots of love to you all and I hope you're keeping really well and I'll see you on my next video, I hope. Bye.